Christ Jesus. You welcome to this uh, time of uh, fellowship in the word. God has given us his word. And he says, give it out. Say to the people, behold the things that your God do. Now let's ask him for auction and utterance. Lord, anoint us with your spirit. Give us utterance. As you have caused us to hear your word, so may we now dispense it. And we worship you, our God. Who works out things after the counsel of your way. There are diversities of oppression, and this is an oppression through this broadcasting network. But it is God that worketh all in all. Work out this, this oppression of yours to bless increasing number of of people all over the world. Let it be so, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Our crowns demand bearing its burden. Now, of course, great and exalted is the status that God has given to us. We sit with Christ in the heavenly places. We are crowned with glory and honor. We are given authority to walk upon the highest powers of darkness. And because they are ruined and spoiled by Christ. We are more than conquerors in the battle. And we enforce the victory of Christ. As we celebrate the victory of Christ. We enforce the defeat of the adversary. And we are required to bear the responsibility. But what are these responsibilities? In the first episode we, we saw that. Our crowning is God's idea. The great and mighty things that are said about us are proclaimed by God. It was part of his plan. Rather, putting it even more correctly, he laid out this plan from the beginning, before time was. In that prophetic statement that defines his activity throughout the ages, until the ages that are wrapped up in time and, and the ages that are boundless, time boundless, unfold. The Bible says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And the person of the Father and of the, and of the Son are at work to accomplish this. In the first episode, we saw that God, whose idea it is to crown us, has done something to make us effective as kings, effective as priests. We are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Amen? And the Lord lets us know in the first episode that he put his responsibility upon Christ. You recall what we saw in Hebrews 2.10. For it was fitting that God should show that he saw all things. His foreknowledge has covered all things that can possibly happen. He has seen every second of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year in the history of man. And he's not fidgeting. Is not in any pandemonium. Nothing takes him by surprise. He knows all things. As it is written, known to God from starting up the history of man. At the that's the foundation of the earth. Are all his works. 
So it was fitting, it was befitting him. For whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in his being to raise up man and bring him to his image and possess measures of his likeness that it can contain in the divine sphere. It became necessary that the one who will directly lead them he make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. We went through that and the Lord is pleased that he's not dealing with lower grade creation. He's dealing with persons in the divine sphere. Divinity is ability to express God without any loss. But divinity is far inferior to deity. God is deity. We are divine persons. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So it became him to make the captain of, the, of our salvation perfect through suffering. And the Lord discovers that his job is easy. He's walking in the midst of persons that are divine spirits. For him that sanctified, verse 11, Hebrews 2, are they that are sanctified are all of one source, sourced in the Father. Amen? Wherefore, it's not a shame to call them brethren. And then he goes on to saying, I will make all things known to them. They will not be ignorant of any area of your plan. All things will be revealed. Your name, your nature, and your workings will be made known to them. In the midst of the congregation, I will teach these, my brethren, how to worship. How to praise your name. This being their highest office. Yes. I will also make known to them the ways of life. Behold I and the children whom God has given me are for signs and wonders. Is that not so? We saw all of that in the 14th verse. It says, all right, these that are divine have the history of being part partakers of flesh and blood. And since they will wear their humanity for quite some time, I have partaken of that same nature apart from sin. Um, being representatives of them, I went forth to destroy him who had the power of death, and that is the devil. And freed these ones that are in the device where from the cost effects of the fall. They are free. They are to look at the adversary and know that he has been spoiled. He has been rendered less than zero. And they are to celebrate the victory of Christ and enforce the defeat of Satan and compel him and continue to make him to have declining fortunes until he gives up the whole of the human race. As it is written, and Satan was taken up and bound for a thousand years and put into the bottomless pit. Now, of course, it's the, 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 the Lord's people that will accomplish that. Sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your fools too. For the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength. A tribe, a nation, a community, a chosen generation out of Zion rule down in the midst of your enemy. So we see he trains us. And that is what we saw in the first episode. And we are entertaining this recap in the interest of those who may be coming to the subject. Now, we go on to show more of God's commitment to our success. In the first part, that is what we do. And in the second part, we begin to discover to ourselves what our direct responsibilities are. So, Christ who does all the things he does towards us as set forth in Hebrews 2, 6 to 14, 15, does so again indirectly through a class of blessings, also of the divine sphere, like you and me, who have had encounters with God 
that have enabled them to be called into the what is called the five-fold ministry. The ministry of apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. Of course, all of these persons are needed. We have access to Christ for direct training. But he places these ministries in the body. And like I normally say, if you are, we are, let me choose a country now. Um, if you are to go from London to Manchester on foot, you probably will be able to get there in uh, uh, 25 days or 30 days if you are muscular and very determined but with bruised feet that is attempting to learn of the things of God absolutely by yourself, removed from the church, removed from the, the fivefold ministries that God has set in the church. A train, a fast-moving train, can do it in two hours, traveling at a speed that falls only a little bit short of what jets, this, this jet liners uh, move on. But a bigger aircraft, we do it only in 30 minutes. The ministry gives, makes us able, able to move on at a fast speed. And we are talking about knowing that there is Christ's indirect responsibility towards us that he exercises through his servants. It's for this reason it is written in Revelation 1 1 that the whole of the revelation of Christ is directed to the servants. For the servants of God will, will dispense that knowledge in the midst of the church and raise up unto the Lord all that he wants. From that fair, the bride is raised. Well, let us look at two scenarios. Learning from the people that God has given to us as much as learning directly from God and uh, uh, learning in the slow path that we take on when we say, well, I have had sex to Christ and don't want any man to teach me. And then you stay alone. Say, do not neglect the assemblies of yourself together. Because in the midst of that assembly, you will see clear indication of the, the timing of the return of the Lord. So much, so much the more as you see the day approaching. The 25th verse of Hebrews 10. So, we go on to two more verses. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 1, to which we may refer, it says in Galatians chapter 4, Verse 1, it says, Now the hair, as long as it's a child, hair of what? Hair of God, hair of God, joint hair with Christ. One of the uh, core realities that, be, that show us what the new creation, the privileges of the new creation. We are hairs of God, we inherit God. God is our inheritance. Blow red. We are heirs of God, joint heir with Christ. But the heir, as long as is a child, has limitation. It doesn't differ from a servant who, servant who is precluded from certain knowledge. He doesn't know what the, his master is doing. And so, for him to be a befitting royal person, is kept under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. And so the Old Testament for 1,500 years under the teachings of those men could not, could not call God Father because they don't have the light. So that arrangement is there. That's the first model. 
there is a second move there where our eyes are open and we find that God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts to give us the knowledge of the glory of God as Christ is preached. Then he, in 1 Peter 2, 9, says he has taken us from darkness, from the world and the oppression and brought us into his marvelous light. Of course, the glorious light of God that was over the children of Israel sprang from his temple. So we can understand why God says we are the temple of the living God. So light ran about us and light within us. In, uh, right from the point of our spiritual rebirth, we cried, Abba, Father. In an instance of time, we are completely launched to a higher sphere. And that's what we see in 1 John 3, 1 and 2. Of course, if you read to verse, verse 2, he says, he is Lord of all, but he doesn't understand how to operate. There are responsibilities that belong to him, but his father will keep him under tutors and governors, but he must submit to them. So, but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. That is a long route. For 1,500 years, they didn't know God as Father. But in 1 John 3, 1 to 2, it says, All right, all right, 1 John 3, 1 to 2, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Amen? That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not, but we know ourselves. Verse 2, beginning, 1, 2, go, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Glory! Now are we the sons of God. We are no longer servants, we are sons. If you, if you run Galatians 4, 2, it says we receive adoption. Give us Galatians 4, 6. So it's a long, long route. True learning piecemeal. But according to the season, God brings tremendous light upon these people. And the light of God is burning brightly. You are a house of light. Within you is light. And you receive strength to engage the adversary. Who is in utter darkness with the strength and might that you obtain from God. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So verse 6, and because ye are sons, hallelujah, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying what? Abba, Father. They said to Jesus, why did you say, say God is your father? That's blasphemy. He can't be blasphemy. He that is born of God is of God. That which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. We are of God. We are children of God. We are sons of God. And prophetic teaching setting forth the mind of God for the hour is superior to a laborious study of that one engages in cutting himself from the house of God. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So there are teachers at Ephesians 4 11 to 13 said this out clearly. And that's the passage you want to read now. Understanding that as Christ teaches us directly and builds us up and is an example to us in all the things we should be leading us in worship, teaching us to trust God, not just to exercise faith, but to trust him, to know the integrity of God's word and the credibility of the God that spoke those words. He said, again, I will put my trust in God, teaching us to put our trust in God. Hebrews 2, 13a. So all of these things are possible of attainment when the light of God breaks upon us. So we see Ephesians 4, 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. We can be taught of the Lord directly 
but the office of teacher is put in the house. One hour with one who is truly a minister of God is more benefiting than several days of study without the light of the new day upon you. Amen. 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 For perfecting the saints, the word in the Greek is richer. It means for preparation of the saints with a view to qualifying them for the work of the ministry and being able also to edify fellow members of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. How long will this go? This circle continues according to verse 13. It, it, okay, his intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints. That is the amplified version. So the perfecting of the saints is not just uh, the ministry give, taking them to perfection. They themselves are not perfect. So they couldn't be taking people to perfection. But they do what they do in increasing measure because God has made a provision for, that they themselves will no growing experience in him. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the age of the fullness of Christ. The word started there means age. We shall come of age. We shall come of the fullness. Amen. So the ministry gives are given to us in this regard. And we are to submit to them. Now, that is the first part. Knowing that we should take advantage of the ministry gifts God has put in the body. If you are following Christ with all your heart, you'll be able to identify persons who are coming forth in character likeness to Christ, who have the word of God and are not merchandising with it. When you find such a, a body of people, stay among them. God's word alive will reach you more abundantly. Amen? But we are closing on this note that our responsibility is to submit to them. And our responsibility as priests is to take the things God has given to us through these several channels and take them back to God in the place of prayer to learn the meaning behind the words more correctly and to receive grace of God in order that we might be able to engage the world and the challenges out there with the very authority we bear. Kings rule by speaking the word, but priests, they rule by receiving light of God and by praying. And when we combine these two offices, the priestly responsibilities give strength to our kingly privileges. Where we have received of him, we can speak. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. We shall be emphasizing this aspect of what we do in our individual capacities. Having received what God does to us directly and indirectly, we may now concentrate on our responsibility proper. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. It remains for us to do two readings, and that will suffice us. Um, we, we have the passage, passages there, Isaiah 40, 28, and 31, and uh, we will take 2 Timothy 2.15. Uh, in the first say, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fated not, neither is weary? There's no searching of his uh, understanding. Yes, he does not faint. He does not grow weary. He is solidly in control. He's not jittery. He reigns. We rule and then reign. But he reigns. He reigns. Nothing can stand against him. Hallelujah. And in the spheres of the earth, 
as he commits his, his trust to us, and we commit our trust to him, we are able to rule for him in the earth. But he reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Amen. He gave a power to the faint. Glory to God. And we shall touch this more in the third episode. And to them that have no might. What does he do there? He what? He increases strength. Even you see the natural, the faint, even though they seem to be full of power. And they are weary. The young men shall utterly fall. If you don't have the habit of knowing a vibrant, closet devotion to God, you don't fizzle out. You will burn out. But God gives us increasing source of enlargement. We will renew our strength. We will renew our strength. We will be full of strength. Glory. So, this last verse is quite specific, straight to the point. For they that wait upon the Lord, habitually this is, if you do 40 days fast, and then you are not with him for the remaining part of the year, the 40 days cannot survive. It's better you are doing one, two days in the week, all through the year, than 40 long jump Long, uh, uh, poor vote uh, exercise and uh, you are to no, no but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings and soar above problems and see to the highest way and, and prevail and reach their destination fast as eagles they shall run and not be weary in broken English, say, you know, they tie yourself. No, 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 no. They shall run and not be weary. Weariness and faithness are the things that are breaking for in the midst of the church world. But there are people who know their new creation status and who know how to receive power with God to engage the challenges of life. Amen. They shall run and not be weak. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord bless you. Amen. We said we would take Second Timothy 2.15 and we'll do that. Study to show thyself. Approve unto God. Study and keep studying. And of course the study must be assisted study as when you learn by what those who are in the fivefold ministry I bring it to you, and when you learn from God directly, amen, study to show thyself and prove unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly setting forth the many faces of truth because one has light. The many divisions of God's word, rightly dividing the word of truth, amen. God bless you. 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 And God bless the hearers. In Jesus' name, amen.